some days, most, the, most days the pattern was you pick it up and it was pretty poor. But then I would get it going with some, some sort of relaxed exercises, maybe some glissando type exercises, slurring, and gradually moving it down from the upper register down into the low register. And I could, it would get going. And I think I could maybe play a simple tune. Um, then I could put the thing down for 30 seconds, one minute, go back to it, and it had gone again. And so it was at the, every day, it was like a, starting at the bottom of the mountain. And, and you would get, each day you would get various, up, up the mountain, <laughs> various stages. But it was never, never stable. I, I then went to see a top neurologist in Hanover. Um, his name was Alton Muller. And he's seen a lot of brass players in, in all over the world. Um, and he's the top European sort of neurologist in musicians to Estonia. And I tried to play a few notes to him, and he confirmed, yes, I, I've got focal dystonia. Um, I'm probably in the 25, top 25% 25 of severity. Um, he explained that 1% of musicians suffer from this, whether you're a brass player or a string player or a pianist or whatever. Um, and really, if I, it, by trying to, keep, trying to get your playing back, it was unlikely to come. And he... Um, sort of recommended that well maybe you should just leave it alone and get on with other things in your life perhaps your teaching conducting coaching leave it alone and he has known a few cases that it's suddenly come back but it's it's unlikely um, and again they don't fully understand it I mean one neurologist thought well it might be something to do with a more on the, from based on a sort of the sensory feedback from from the mouthpiece um, which causes the brain to um, to malfunction, and so I experimented with plastic rims and even covering the the rim of the mouthpiece with a cloth um, or, or perhaps cork or just something to try and trick the brain away from that sensory sensory feedback because I think that's what the the core of it is. I can blow air down a straw or down a piece of tubing. But when you put the trombone mouthpiece on and you, you attempt to play, bang. It's like the brain saying, no, this, we're not having this, or, or the, we get mixed and confused messages, causing muscular spasm and ju just loss of the natural control. The thing about this is it becomes, you know, panic stations. If this is your way of making a living that suddenly is, is coming to a halt, you know, it's, it's crumbling before your own eyes and everything, then to try and come to terms with that in itself, psychologically, is really hard anyway. You have got to get it into your head that the way that you're doing this has now broken and find a different way to do it. Now, you've got all the knowledge because you're already playing to that level. You just have to do it differently, and that's the bit that's hard. One of the answers is probably not to play the same mouthpiece and the same instrument for the whole of your career. If you can get it into your head that you just need to keep changing it, change seems to be good because then the, the signal that's, been, that's coming from your brain going down your neurological pathway to your task-specific area, i.e. on sure for us, it never gets used to using the exact same route. So the first thing that I did when um, I sort of decided how I was going to try and fix all this was I changed the mouthpiece and I changed my instrument. Your brain instantly recognises the fact that you're now holding something else because it's a different weight, you hold it slightly differently, it's different on your face, so it doesn't recognise what it was before. What's interesting with most, pe most people that have got dystonia, if you play your instrument backwards or lying down or leaning against the wall or something like that, pretty much the symptoms vanish and you can then play again. But you can't turn up in the Halley Orchestra and play a trombone leaning on the couch. So. <laughs> It might have worked for Andy, but was a change of instrument good for Bob as well? One theory that I know Ian Bousfield has talked about is that I, in my own case, I'd, I'd played on an old Con 62H for 20, 25 years with a 2G mouthpiece, and I really hadn't changed from that because that was my, I thought, my ideal setup. And around the time of these difficulties, I did dabble with a new, new trump bass trombone, 
which I played on for a few months, and then I thought, no, I'll go back to the, the old instrument. And it was when I went back to the old instrument these problems started. So it was something, it was almost as if I was so perhaps fine tuned into that old instrument. When I tried the new instrument, it just unbalanced something. It didn't feel quite the same, or uh, somehow I think perhaps it was a sensory thing. You know, the, maybe the resistance of the instrument was different, or the, the, the sound wasn't quite the same, and my ears were trying to trying to point me in a different direction or something. But um, I think maybe it was that change of instrument that um, maybe triggered the, the whole thing. Whereas someone I know, Ian Bowsfield himself, he's always changing instruments. He's never happy. He's always changing instruments, mouthpieces. He sounds equally as good on all of them. But um, he just wonders maybe that, that variety and flexibility that has to come in because of that change might be it might be a healthy thing in the in the long long run but who knows who it's difficult to prove once i tried one of these ergo bone support things because i thought well maybe there's some tension going up the through the arm up the shoulder and neck i made rapid progress and, and again it was this thing wow this this is this is it. It must be caused by a tension, a sort of hidden tension you're not aware of in the arm. Um, and then suddenly, the next, one day, it completely went again. So it, it was almost as if the brain's thinking, well, um, this, oh, this is new. Um, yeah, we've not done this before. Yeah, okay. And then they suddenly, the, the brain thinks, oh no, he, he is, he's just playing the trombone again. He may not be able to play the trombone anymore, but was it possible for Bob to still play brass. I had a discussion once with um, Radovan Vlakovic. He's a top horn soloist. He, he came up to my hotel room and, and, and I, demos- I tried to show him and he was mystified by this. So he, he gave me his horn. He said, go on, play a note on that. So I managed to play about three octaves on his horn, which I shot, it surprised me, actually. And he said, well, why, perhaps why don't you try a different instrument, a horn or trumpet? So I thought, well, nothing, nothing lost really. Can't get any worse. So I did for a period. I tried the horn, and for maybe a week or so, there was I was making some progress, and then suddenly that seemed to crash. Anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, really, I sort of um, got on with my life. I'm lucky enough. I, I teach at the Royal Academy of Music and at Birmingham Conservatoire, and I took on a small job on a, on a Thursday teaching at a little local prep school. So I was teaching young beginners, really, um, all brass, trumpet, horn, baritone, trombone. Um, it was an area that I'm not taught a lot in in the past. But um, and one day I picked up a trumpet and sort of tried to demonstrate. And really, I mean, I could never have really played a trumpet very well. I, mean, I, th- I thought, how can you get your lips inside a tiny little mouthpiece like that so it would never have been very good but I kind of persevered a bit with this over the last 18 months and slowly the, the trumpet's getting gradually better I mean the, my, the sound which was horrible and fizzy and well, their range was very poor um, have improved but it, it's terribly slow progress and I, I still th- I don't think it's without some effect from the the, the focal dystonia but at least I can now play simple tunes and demonstrate to, to the youngsters, you know. Um, so I, I'm, I'll, I'm not, I don't have a whole high ambitions for that, but I'll, I'll just see where it goes and just have a bit, a bit of fun with it, you know. <laughs>